Hello everyone. The purpose of this video is to show you a few sites around London that have been the subject of either ongoing restoration or maybe in need of restoration sometime into the future. And so with this project I want to give you some ideas of some sites that you could profile for your independent project for this class, but I don't want you to feel limited by what I'm talking about in this presentation, in this video. I want you to think about some other sites you might know about. Maybe you're in your hometown or some places that you've driven past in London itself. So here I am standing in a park called Euston Park. It's part of what's called uh, the Coves system in London, Ontario. This is near Warncliffe and Emery Streets. You can get here on the Warncliffe South bus, and I think the Berkshire bus goes uh, nearby as well. So if I just pan around, you can see there's a lot of wild, uh, there are a lot of wildflowers around here. There's this meadow. You can see these signs for ecological restoration and this naturalization sign up here as well. This is a really nice area. There are uh, people living around here who I often see out walking their dogs. Um, it's, it's enjoyable. They're, they have this gravel trail. On some parts they have wood chips as well. Now, it looks nice now, but it didn't always. If I pan over here, you might have an idea of why this site uh, exists. So that tower there that I showed you is for venting methane and other gases that accumulate through the decomposition of the garbage that was buried on this site. So this hill here was formed from landfill uh, over the course of several years. Um, this site now, uh, as you can see, has been restored. Um, and there's now a lot of good habitat for animal and plant life. But this took a lot of work from restoration ecologists. Next I'll profile a site that is closely connected to this site called the Coves. It's a little bit north of this site, um, also accessible on the Warncliffe South bus route. Um, it's just off of Warncliffe. And the Coves in general is one of the best places to see birds in London. So here I am at the Coves now. The Coves is a nice site. Um, if you go to the website ebird.com, they'll show you some of the best sites for finding birds in each county. And in Middlesex County, where London is, the Coves is in the top 10. It's one of the best places to look for different birds. Um, I've seen this year um, great blue herons. I saw one on my way in. There are also green herons, black crowned night herons, which are pretty rare and then great egrets, which are pretty seasonal. There are also a whole bunch of different smaller birds that you can see. So I'm gonna pan over the site now. It's a nice site. Uh, this was once actually part of the Thames River. When Europeans first arrived here, this was uh, a very slow moving meander of the Thames River. Um, towards the end of the 18th century, uh, there was a really fast moving bit of water that went through the Thames, pushed its way through um, the embankment, and now the Thames flows in a totally different direction. So there are three small ponds around here that are called Oxbow Lakes. They were once part of the river, um, but now they are their own separate lakes. So you, across the river you can see um, the Great Blue Heron. I think I just scared a turtle off of this, um, this log. So this is a site that's now really desirable. People actually have docks on this uh, part of the, the Thames, which is not connected to the Thames anymore. Um, the German Canadian Club is just over that way. This is uh, off of Warncliffe. Uh, the best street to take to get here would be Cove Street, coincidentally. And uh, it wasn't always this way though. There was once a uh, not so nice stuff around here. During the World Wars, there was actually a shooting range here. Um, they, were, they would practice shooting rifles and I think even cannon. Uh, no, that, that, would, that would be unusual um, by the, uh, the 1940s. But anyways, it's a, it's a nice site. Um, and it was only through a lot of hard work from groups like the uh, Friends of the Cove and the uh, Upper Thames Conservation Authority that this is now 
this, the pristine site that you see today. So you can think about what might have been done to help restore the site and if there are any areas that you can think of near a river that could be suitable projects for your own independent study. Extraction of natural resources can have some of the broadest and deepest effects on a natural landscape. Uh, around London we don't have a lot of mining operations but there are a lot of quarries and gravel pits that are used to extract ores to help build roads and buildings. This particular site is owned by Lafarge who is one of the largest producers of gravel in, uh, in Canada. Um, in behind that ridge there is an active gravel site. Uh, today I don't see any um, any equipment but there is often equipment here. In front we have this large pond and it has ended up being one of the best sites to see birds because a lot of birds um, during migration will see this large uh, this large pond and settle down here during a storm. So this particular site has a mix of um, good habitat already as well as uh, resource use. And when this particular site is no longer used for its current purpose of extracting gravel, um, there will be efforts to restore and reclaim this site to restore it to a more natural condition. I'm going to show you in the next uh, little section uh, a small pond that has already been restored and is in the process of going to that uh, more natural condition. This is what can happen with a gravel pit after it has been restored. This particular site is just uh, a bit west of that Rebecca Road gravel pit that, I'm, that I just showed you. Uh, this particular site is on Medway Road, a little bit east of Clark Road, so it's not uh, a bus ride away. You would have to drive out here. But you can see that we have this pit that was once used to store aggregate of uh, mixed stone and sand, um, but it's been restored with some cattails, some wildflowers, you can see butterflies flying around. And those, uh, that pond now has a few ducks and mergansers and even grebes living in it. Um, so this is a, a site that has, uh, it's on its way to being restored and I think with even more time we may see that this is one of the best places f uh, to go fishing or to see birds um, just outside of London. Agriculture is another significant anthropogenic disturbance. Here I've sh I'm showing you a field uh, that's bordering Dundas Street and Shaw Road a little bit east of London. This particular farm is farming sod which is just grass. This grass is going to be harvested and sold to facilities like golf courses or uh, real estate developments that have um, new houses that need lawns. So these are fairly unnatural green spaces and once traffic passes I'm going to cross to the other side of the road and this is what the field looks like after it's been harvested. So this field is going to be harvested every two years um, leaving um, this sort of bare patch of dirt. Now each time sod is harvested a little layer of topsoil is taken with it and so that makes it a little bit harder to um, recover the state of this uh, of the site after uh, a farmer is finished with it. So this is just one example of an agricultural site that may need to be recovered. In truth this particular site is probably going to be sold to a developer to build houses or um, businesses far before it is recovered to be uh, a more natural state. But many agricultural sites will go through um, a series of uh, development where they may lay fallow for a while and may eventually return to their n more natural state. And an ecological restoration project may be developed to accelerate that level of restoration. In many communities a lot of large buildings whether they be factories or in this case a hospital have been abandoned. 
And these are large facilities that have a lot of good land that could be converted to other purposes. Ideally, a lot of cities would like to turn these properties into spaces that can either house or employ other people. But sometimes the economy has just changed too much. There's not a lot of demand for factory space in a lot of our cities anymore. So an option is to restore this habitat, this land, into areas that could house uh, or could be hab habitat for wildlife. So this particular hospital, the South Street Hospital, you can see is at the corner of Colborne and Nelson Streets in uh, the southern part of London. And this facility uh, is right next to a branch of the Thames River. So it could be a really nice habitat for, um, for a lot of wildlife. Now this is a problem that exists here in London. I've highlighted one site, but you can probably identify a few factories in your hometown that have been abandoned. In my hometown of Brockville, Ontario, one facility uh, was abandoned uh, around 1995 and it was torn down about 10 years later. The concrete pad that was sort of the foundation for that factory now has a lot of uh, trees and plants, other plants growing in it. This is a uh, a very common issue and so we now have a lot of interest in urban areas for restoration ecology as well. Many of the sites I've shown you so far are restoration projects in terrestrial habitats but here is a restoration project that's been undertaken by the City of London to rehabilitate a tributary of the Thames River. This is a small stream, it's very slow uh, flowing it's found between Oxford to the north, Wonderland to the west, and Proudfoot Lane to the east. I put a GoPro in this creek last spring, and I found that there was a pretty good population, or community rather, of Ciprinids, um, so minnow-like creatures. This uh, habitat used to have a lot of trees overhanging the river. Um, and then this spring, in the spring of 2020, many of those trees were chopped down and uh, this black um, wrap was added to the riparian zone, which is intended to make the creek narrower and to prevent the growth of uh, a vegetation really close to that river. So the hope here is to make the river a little more fast flowing. It'll be deeper and narrower and that might make it more um, attractive to a lot of uh, the local fish community. So this is a project that only began in the spring of 2020 and uh, I'm sort of interested to see where it's going to go. The intended, the stated purpose is to help restore the fish community um, and we'll see how they do with that. Now in Meadow Lily, an environmentally sensitive area in uh, the east part of London, it's just east of Highbury, south of Hamilton Road. And I'll scan around here. This is, an, this is an unusual part of Meadow Lily. It's the meadow, but a lot of it is actually treed. This is an example of an area where, even though it is largely pristine, it's a beautiful place to go for a walk. I've seen a lot of locals here going for walks with their dog, or with their camera and binoculars, but this area here is showing us that restoration isn't ever really finished. A reason for that is we can get introductions of invasive species. Now behind me is the European buckthorn. It's an invasive species that can outcompete a lot of native uh, vegetation for uh, sunlight and for resources in the soil. So this is an invasive species that a lot of um, land management uh, individuals and groups try to manage by removing and in this particular meadow there are several dead trees of the buck buckthorn uh, around the area. So the hope with this restoration effort is by removing the buckthorn they open up space for some native wildlife to reestablish 
Sometimes they'll be active and introduce uh, seeds from native wildlife directly. Sometimes they may allow the local um, vegetation to seed the area itself. So here I want to demonstrate this is an area where restoration isn't really finished. Um, for a lot of uh, land trust organizations it is an ongoing effort and a lot of work needs to be done for a long period of time to make sure that the natural environment remains healthy.